go. The wonders of technology, mate. I've there done it. Is. I've done it. Thank you. Thank you, Chloe. You're an absolute star. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Hello TC, good evening mate Good evening, thank you ever so much There you go, 60 grand's, 60 grand's worth of school fees There we go <laughs> mate, it's worth it somehow <laughs> isn't it mate She knows how to get me on a Zoom call That's it, it's worth the money mate Investment, that's what I say, definitely right um, yeah. We said a very one good evening And like a very good evening to you TC Thank you very much No problem, pleasure Brilliant. Right, um, we were just talking about the um the game that's already come up did you manage to catch any of the game last night no i didn't i'm sorry so uh <laughs> no you no, you're not don't be sorry about it mate you didn't actually miss much to be honest um <laughs> that probably uh gets rid of 55 minutes worth of chat doesn't it <laughs> gets rid of gets rid of two hours mate if we had to go to two hours put it that way but um we, no i was... didn't i didn't see it no but generally if you manage to catch any of the um I mean, you must have seen it in the press and stuff about how we've been getting on or how we've not been getting on. And what's your assessment from what you've actually gathered over the season or you've managed to catch I up just, to? Uh, probably like a lot of teams, or, or probably you use the same excuse at the moment, is, um, you know, certain teams have come back after lockdown and mm. not not looking as good as there was before lockdown. You know, before lockdown, I would have probably said uh, Watford will be safe and you know but now uh, it's a bit of a worry isn't it yeah just a little bit uh, a bit depressing dino mate i know you um i know you had plenty to say yes and your ghost hunting um look tc honestly i sent you a picture we did a full time yesterday and it honestly it looked like it looked like he was um on ghost hunting mission it was absolutely brilliant i've got i'll go give him enough i'll give him enough stick for that and it'll be out of the way in about 10 minutes either he'll get fed up a bit in a minute but <laughs> but brilliant. So, yeah, it yeah. Just, yeah, go on. Sorry, go on. It just weren't good enough, was it, Paul? It just, it just weren't good enough yesterday again. And you're getting the same excuses from the players. We go again. Well, I'd like to see it now, you know. It's too much. Yeah. It, Can't it, even say the fitness level. Go on. Might leave it too late to say uh, we'll go again. And, you know, it's, a, it's an easy thing to say that, you know, we'll, we'll regroup, we'll do this and we'll go again. And listen, that's all they can do. So it's a given anyway. But, um, you know, as I said, I didn't see yesterday, so I don't know whether there's chances being created or chances being missed. No. Why don't, you know, easily beaten or whatever. Um, so I can't really comment. I have seen a few games of late. Um, not been that impressed. Um, and, um, you know, it's as I say, um, lockdown come at the wrong time. Yeah, I think you're absolutely spot on. A lot of people mention that, that, barring probably most of the Leicester game aside, that we're one of the teams. And I think uh, apart from, I think similar, I put us in the same bracket as Sheffield United until their last game, where they were seriously looking, struggling and not really started, to be honest. And I think that's, a lot of people said yesterday that we've really been affected by the lockdown. Uh, yeah. We're one of the worst ones, I think, as well. Um, uh, your friend Nigel Callahan's on, by the way. Uh, Callie. Oh. Uh, yeah, and he did say to say hello last time. And so did Gibbo, by the way. Yeah, well. <laughs> uh, so, so, who have you had on? Callie, Gibbo, Luther? Uh, Luther, we managed to, managed to tag Luther. Uh, the, the, the big man, TC, yourself. Uh, Jono always comes on. He's an he's absolute legend, that guy, um, as a D yourself. Yeah, Gibbo, uh, we might get you a to, couple Have you had Tommy Mooney yet? No, I ain't had Tomo yet, but I could have easily done that the Hornets side if yesterday. But they do like a little thing on Watford uh, Football Club there with um, Alan Smart, who actually came round and um, sat on my sofa, which was quite an eye opener. And uh, we were, I was going to quickly cheeky plug it and say, Oi, Tomo, you know where I live. Um, yeah. but, <laughs> not yet, not yet. I'm working on him. But um, guys, yeah. if, you, if you're just joining in, this uh, this is the TMA Sunday Night Podcast with myself the young, uh, and the young man, Daniel Dean. And we've got none other than the Watford Man City and Birmingham legend, uh, TC, Mr. Tony Coton. Um, obviously, amongst the plethora of clubs he's uh, been in, he's uh, Ma ex-Man United also. Like I say, um, Man City had uh, one or two games for Man City, shall we say. Um, I was... Uh, uh, Obviously, I was just growing up during the tail end of the glory era, as we called it, the golden era, which you starred with um, many type, many players, including Callie himself. 
uh, I know knew you probably more for your stint at Man City around the tail end when you left and uh, obviously Mel Reese and um, J- David James came in and then you starred for Man City but what was that like we say that golden era like I mean because you came from you came from Birmingham didn't you Taylor sort of um, recruited you over from Birmingham didn't he yeah um you know, it, it was um, it, it was a time in my career which I, I think is well documented. It's a time that I needed to get away from Birmingham. Mm. I've had a couple of uh, off the field uh, incidents, and um, you know, I got called into Ron Saunders' office uh, one Monday morning, and um, I thought, "Barney, what have I been doing this weekend? Where have I been?" <laughs> <laughs> you know. <I'm>, yeah. <laughs> Sure, I've not been in trouble. Yeah, what have um, I done wrong? <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically, as I was walking down the corridor, scratching my head, I'm thinking, why does he want to see me? It's not to give me a rise, I'm sure. And, um, <laughs> and um, he just said, look, he said, um, the club's financial plight is, you know, is not good. And we've had an offer for you, which the club have accepted. And you're free to go and speak to uh, Graham Taylor. Mm. Um, so I said, right, okay, um, right. Um, I knew all about uh, all about Watford, obviously, because I played against them, and I knew yeah, about sure. their, attack, their attacking style. I knew about Graham, um, you know, and certain individuals in the team. So um, anyway, um, I made my way down to um, what was it called? That the Labbrook. The Ladbrook Hotel on the A41 next to the Game Bird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I stop, I remember stopping at Toddington Services and obviously no mobile phones then and um, <laughs> yeah. got, 10, got 10 pence out and said to my dad, guess where I am? And uh, I said, uh, Birmingham are willing to sell me. Graham Taylor's come in. I'm on my way to Watford. He said, brilliant. He said, uh, don't come back. Until you sign. <laughs> That's so, good advice, so, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, but, but basically, I think my dad just wanted me away from the Tamworth in the Birmingham area, you know, mm. for, for my career, for my career, really. So um, yeah, I met um, I met Graham at um, the Labrook, and um, and like many players must have said in the past, once he gets in front of him and once he gets talking, there's only one winner. Yeah, you know, and I'd have probably signed. For, I'd have probably signed for less money than I was on at Birmingham. If to, to be truth, what how he sold it to me, how he sold the club, um, you know, he knew everything about my background. He knew more about me than I knew myself. Yeah, it was, uh, it was incredible, you know, and um, you know some of the things he said, and and I have to say he was true to his word. Um, you know, the type of players that he wanted to bring in. Um, type of players that he got um, and he said listen he said you don't let many goals in at Birmingham he said you don't score any he said our problem <laughs> is we let lots of goals but we score a lot he said um, you know we're having to score threes to every game to win to win a game of football yeah. so he said oh, I want you to come in and uh, you know he said I've seen you dishing the orders out I've seen your good information I stood behind the goal at Craven Cottage when you beat Fulham. He says, I heard all the instructions and all the information you was giving out to your back four. Yeah. And, um, that's, on. Uh, he's on, he's on, he's in. <laughs> Where you been? <laughs> it's so right, he was desperate, he's desperate to say hello. So um, if you don't right. mind, please see. Right. Listen, Tony Coton, I, you're a hero, you're a hero of mine, going right the way back. We have Mickey Walker with Van Andy Rankin, but you, to me, are the best goalkeeper Watford have ever had. Forget Pat Jennings. Pat Jennings was only with Watford for one year, but you, to me, hey, are... can you see? Can you see that, Ray? Can you see that shirt? Oh, cool. I've yeah. Got two, I've got. I've, I've been very fortunate to meet lots of people in my career, uh, <laughs> from all works of life, from film stars, politicians, whatever, and um, I've only got two two autographs. Uh, in, in my life. One's Pat Jennings, uh, who was um, wow. a bit of an idol of mine growing up, and Muhammad Ali. 
Oh my god! Man, oh, wow! So, so, uh, Man, I'm, Nelly, wow! I, I, I'm happy now. So uh, I've got. That, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, there's there's Pat's signed shirt to me there. So, uh, so the yeah. base, the base that you've had shovel hands, shovel hands, which is Pat Jennings' autograph, and you've, you've had Mohammed Ali, who to me is a star. I've got his picture up in my lounge. He is okay. absolutely immense, and I it's yeah. my best ever boxer. Yeah. Met him in, I think it was 1982. Uh, <laughs> he, he was doing a tour at Birmingham at the time and we were at home to Liverpool. And he came into our dressing room and shook hands with everything. And it was just at the start of the, the Parkinson's disease, you know? It was just, yeah. that, that was, the, you, could, you could just see the onset of that. And, um, you know, but it, 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 I, I just stood there open mouth staring at him, like, you know what I mean? Like, like the rest of the team did, really. Just, yeah. Such an aura, you know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So uh, anyway, thank you for those kind words, Ray. You've missed the best ten minutes, and uh, <laughs> that's it. That's it. The podcast is over now. The first I'm ten minutes say, was the classic. I'm going to say goodbye now. Hi, <laughs> Tony. How are you, sweetheart? You okay? I've got so. Hey, Tony. I'm Sonia. No, it's me. Sonia. Sonia. It's Sonia. Right. She's. Oh, uh, Sonia. You've been listening to Kelly, Sonia. Yes, I've, I have been listening to Callie. I love Callie. Yeah. Tony, nice to see you. You're my hero. <laughs> Thank oh. you. So Thank there you are. There you are. You're everyone's hero, mate. Yes, um, I love Callie. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Damn, I'm, I'm, I'm on my door. I'm on my door. I'm on my door. I'm on my daughter's laptop here, and there's some words come up that's just blocking your two faces out and I don't press anything in case I cut myself off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, you're good, mate. You're good. Have you got my dad's house, actually? Did he? Yeah. There you are. You got, you're, you're claim to fame is Tony. Hello. That. Hello, Pidge. No, no. Tony, Tony <laughs> apparently, uh, and his dad bought your house, apparently. No, like, he bought my he dad's bought your house. house. He bought, no, Tony yeah. bought All my right. dad's house. I think the sound's a bit, the, the, yeah. Okay. Right. Ray. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. We go. We go that. Ray. We'll cut, cut you off in a minute, mate, and then we'll just um, message in message into the show, fella. All right. No problem. But just, just to a... say that uh, happy memories, Tony, and um, really enjoyed your time at Watford. And to be Tony, honest with you, you, best you. best goalkeeper we've ever had, I reckon. Thanks, Ray. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. Thanks. See you again soon, mate. Okay. Right, okay. Um Tony, that's it. Yeah, no, no. We've um I think um <laughs> one of his fan club who have one or two many jars, but that's uh sort of one of the um one of his many fan club on his podcast that he does on a Saturday. So uh right. and he always speaks very highly of you, Tony. So uh Ray but I promised Ray that I was gonna let him on just to uh, say hello to you. So um no, pro- no problem. Uh, brilliant, thank you. Right, uh so um, you had a debut at 19 against, funny enough, Future Club Sunderland, I believe, in 1980. But didn't you sign for them in 1978 for Birmingham originally? I know we're going back back to your roots again, but... Did I just, re- just repeat that, Pidge? Yeah. What did you say? Yeah, sorry, the sound's not great. I think you had your debut at 19 against your, uh, well, Sunderland. Future Club. Was it Tottenham or was it Sunderland? It was back in December Sunderland. 1980. Was it Tottenham? Sunderland, uh, but yeah, Sunderland, you, you Sunderland. my debut for Birmingham was uh, against uh, Sunderland with a, I think you were going to probably skip to where I saved the penalty with my first touch. On ah, my see, see, I didn't put that down. <laughs> I wanted you, Did I didn't you want to put too much down, no. <laughs> All right, well, I'll just big myself up then, shall I? Uh, too right, yeah. too right, go for it, brilliant. Yeah, so uh, it's a, um, my debut was against Sunderland. Uh, first touch of the ball was to save a penalty after 54 seconds. I think it's still in the Guinness Book of Records now. Yeah, uh, too right. And, um, yeah, and then, uh, funny enough, there's no one around Sunderland that remembers that. Because <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm working for Sunderland at the moment. So, um, uh, there's no there's no one, in the two years I've been there, there's nobody ever mentioned it. So, uh, um, you know, so... Uh, but uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I'll get on social media later and just give him a little nudge and just let him know. Anyway, <laughs> well, I wouldn't bother if I was you. I, um, <laughs> I was. Uh, yeah, it was an eventful start, you know. So mm. uh, yeah, 
it was um, yeah, it was good. Yeah, well, like you said, uh, like we've already touched upon, you. I mean, you were originally you did from what I can see, you went on to Hereford on loan, but then you went obviously went to Watford in '84, um, and you pretty much said it saved your life. Pretty much, like you said, you said your old man said, "No, don't come back until you're signed. We need you out of Birmingham, yeah. really, for your own yeah. sort of sanity as well as your career." Uh, yeah. What I mean, the main reason I mean, don't touch it. I mean, there's obviously different uh, uh, side views and opinions about this, but mainly Watford leaving Watford was would it would it be fair to say it was literally just to step up Premier League, Man City at the time and uh, you know you've had your you've had your time at Watford and you know we were sort of like really a mid-table sort of struggling division two side and Man City came along and big big club was it Peter Reid that was manager at the time no I was with Kendall oh well, um, Kendall yeah yeah no so what had happened in in the um obviously with with Graham leaving was a it was a massive um a massive wrench really because he'd been so good for me and um I think would that be around eighty seven when he went to Villa? Eighty seven, yeah, and then Bassett took over, yeah, which was fond yeah. memories for us obviously. <laughs> uh, well me as well, yeah. <laughs> uh, um so um you know no, nothing against uh, Harry Bassett, Dave Bassett. Um you know I've seen him many times since this that, mm. and the other. He, he always said it weren't personal. No, uh, no, but that was the, you know, and I'm, I'm listen. If I, I deserve to be dropped, I deserve to be dropped. It's the only time I've I, I've ever been dropped was with Harry. Yeah. Um, and um, you know, it's it, it's difficult when all the players are saying to you they can't believe what the manager's doing. You know, the, the coaches are saying the same, this, that, and the other. But you have you have to get on with it. The fact yeah. that the train the training for me was was poor. Uh, and I asked to I asked to train with, um, I think it was Tom Wally in the reserves at the time, um, to get my goalkeeping work in. Uh, I, I used to have to do that. Um, so, yeah, it was a time at the club which weren't the best. Um, as I say, Graham left, and then um, not long after, um, Steve Harrison come back come back to the club. Uh, well, I knew Steve because he'd been the, the coach, first team coach with uh, with Graham. Yeah, and um, I wanted to support him, you know, and um, try and try and help us get back uh, in, into the first division. Um, we just missed out. We were at the top for most of the season, and we uh, we lost to Blackburn in the. Yeah, in, I remember that uh, just about. On the away goals, I think it was. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think yeah. it was back in the old days when um, it yeah. used to be away goals, wasn't it? Yeah, so um, you know, and I said, and, and at that time, Tottenham had come in for me. Uh, there was an inquiry from Leeds. Um, Arsenal had, had had a sniff. Um, wow. So, um, and I'd said to Steve, look, I promised you I'd stay and and support you to try and try and get you through. So we come to an arrangement that I got a new uh, Sir Elton got involved, and um, I signed a new contract. But in there, there was a there was a, a clause that said if anybody come with a million pound, uh, and it suited me, um, I could leave. Yeah, that's um, fair enough. And then what really made my mind up was the fact that Steve resigned, uh, said management wasn't for him, and at the time then we, I think Colin Lee took over, and there was Colin Lee and David Hay, I think. Hmm. Yeah, the ex Celtic player would would that be right? His name? Yeah, I think yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, the ex Celtic player. Yeah, and um, so it weren't, it wasn't great. You know, everything wasn't great there. Um, and um, next minute, I'm being told Man City have um, uh, have come in. They've reached the 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 clause, and um, I was free to go and speak to Man City again. <laughs> I, spoke, I spoke to my dad. And um, and um, I just said, "What do you think?" And he said, "Do you think you've, you know, you've had your time? You you, you feel you've done enough at, at Watford, and it doesn't the the normal stability that Watford had had with Graham being there all that time and this that and the other 
And I thought, oh, we'll get back to that with Steve. And then Steve resigned. And then it was just a bit, it was a bit too loose for me. And I just thought, right, I'm 30 now. You know, I probably need to, you know, if it's one or two moves um, left in me, then it's probably the right time. So, yeah. and I never got any grief, really. I never got any grief from, I mean, the Watford fans have always been magnificent to me. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of letters. Uh, thank no, not one um, slagging me off for leaving. I think they all thought I was going to leave before I did. But loyalty, uh, that's what we're, uh, uh, that's one yeah. thing we appreciate, and most clubs do is loyalty. And the thing is, that you stuck around more longer than everyone expected. So yeah. kudos out I, for that as well. I think I don't think a lot of people knew that. You know, when you've got people like Tottenham. Arsenal leads and uh, uh, sniffing at that time, then you know um, people didn't know that, and it was it was it wasn't difficult to turn it down. I, I look back sometimes, and people say, "Do you wish you'd have gone to Tottenham because your international career might have been a bit better, or this, that, and the other?" And uh, and I say, "No, nah, no, nah, really." It's, you, you look back, and you can uh, we can all have lots of regrets and all that, and I'm not one of them that that, that want to want to ponder on that. No, what no. what went on went on, and what will be will be. So um, and that's how I, that's how I dealt with it. And so the next chapter started up in up in Manchester. Yeah, no, it's good. I, Dino, I know I'm not going to hog this sort of. All pod. I know you've got a couple of questions to throw at TC. Um, you you shoot, mate, and then I've got a couple. Uh, what's your favourite match you've played in for um, Watford, Tony? Um. There's a there's a few in there. I'll, I'll surprise probably surprise you with a couple, but um, um, it'd be it'd be wrong of me not to mention that the quarter final away to uh, Liverpool when we drew nil nil, um, uh, and I I have to mention it, but I don't like mentioning it because the second uh, the replay gets brought up, then with the the famous penalty with um, with Ian Rush, and we and we lost two one. Mm. But I would probably I would, I would probably say the the Liverpool away, um, uh, Arsenal in the quarter final when we won three one, and then I went and broke my leg uh, broke my thumb before the, mm. the semi final, um, and there was a couple of others Coventry away uh, in the FA Cup the year after they won it, uh, and we not we not we not them out. Um, and we, we I think we won one nil with a. I'm trying to rack my brains. Who scored the goal? Would it have been Trevor Senior? Oh, one Trevor Senior! That's a blast from the past. That is one of the few that he got. Um, I stand corrected on that one. I can't. I can't remember. But um, we got a battered anyway, and we we uh, I had one of those games, and we won one nil. Um, so prob- probably there, probably those stand out, um, and then there's other games mean, you know, mean a lot because of the importance of them or a particular time when you made a a particular save or something happened in a game. But mm. in in a, in all round performances, I would probably say uh, those in that, in in that order. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Right. We've got a couple of thanks for all your comments, guys and girls. Uh, uh, we've got one thrown out from Cali. He says, I'm the second best goalkeeper. Um, that's from Mr. Cali himself. Um, we've got Sirens going, hi, Tony, Watford's greatest keeper ever. You know that's true. He's, a, he's our TMA greatest goalkeeper of all time as well. Because we did a lot of, we really were trying to make ideas up when we had everyone on my sofa, when we had our usual live podcast, obviously, before COVID hit. Uh, about a year or so ago and we did obviously every single Sunday we did a, a certain position obviously goalkeeper first went all the way to forward so you are without a doubt it, it was a couple that were without a shadow of doubt I think the forward line was Blissett Blissett, Barnes and Cali were the nailed on um, ones alongside yourself and John, Johnny Mack as well John McClellan's as well and rightly so, you, so. yeah and rightly so yeah exactly I thought you'd say that as well <laughs> no no right. No, I'm, I was talking about the other three, not me, not not no. myself. Oh no, no, you were pretty the much four, the other four, really. The two, the two wide men were the best that I've played in. Yeah. Um, you know, and, um, two different styles of wingers in Kelly and uh, Barnsley, but the best crosses that by 
by far. Rick Oldham was who, who, who played I played with twice at, um, at Watford and at Man City. He was a good crosser of the ball. Oh, Rick Oldham, yeah. Nothing, nothing, nothing like Cali and um, uh, and Barnsley. Um, you know, I, I think Cali was probably uh, one of the most underrated players. Um, you know, uh, certainly uh, at Watford. Um, you know, in in, in terms of um, other people got the plaudits, probably myself and and John, but Kelly was a Kelly was a hell of a player, you know. And yeah. I I used to I used to hate him in training because he used to beat me. <laughs> he used to beat me for fun, honestly. In, yeah. The, there's a handful of players in, in my career that I just hated in training because they made me look stupid. Um, <laughs> you know, and um, yeah, and. If, I don't know whether Nigel's listening because he normally spins the decks. He's, he's spinning the decks on a Sunday. I think he's goes. sort of warming them up for his uh, warming them up for um, tonight. I think, but while he while he's um, claiming the second best second keeper tag, I think. Well, that was, that yeah. was when I got sent off at Arsenal and Cali yeah. went. Cali went in, um, and I can't remember what the score was when I went off. To be honest, um, but um, I know his first thing. Uh, the first thing he had to do was face a penalty. I know, I know, I know that because that was why I, I, I said some choice words to the linesman, which got me sent off. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and then Kelly went in, and his first task was to face a penalty, and I, I don't even know who took it. Martinez, I think, or something. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, Kelly was very good in training. I know that when he put the gloves on. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, so so the, to be linked with those names, Luther. Uh, of course, he, yeah. you know he's number one on everything, and then um, and then uh, Barnsley, um, Nige, and uh, Slippers, John McClellan. <laughs> um, you know he's uh, he's an honour, yeah. Yeah, definitely brilliant. We've got Greg Theek has said TC best Watford FC goalkeeper ever by a country mile. Fabulous player, should have played for England. But in that era, there were some great keepers when you were playing as well, especially around the mid eighties. I'm not. Uh, I'm not one to really watch it, but I think I'd have had. A, I think I'd have had over seventy caps now if I was playing now. Um, you know, in, in in terms of the England position now, but I did have a lot of competition then. You yeah. know, oh yes, Dave, Dave Seaman, Chris Woods, Nigel Martin, Peter Shilton, Peter Shilton, Tim Flowers. Yeah. Um, you know, the list goes on, and um, you know, now it's. You know, we're not strong in that area at the moment. No, I think, yeah, the joking is it sounds you probably would actually get 70, 70 caps at the moment because it, Pickford was nailed on. Now they're looking at like the likes of Pope and players like that, but it's nothing's nailed on anymore. I mean, back then you had about six, seven really genuinely, well, possibly world class keepers, yeah. you know, hunting around there. Obviously, Pat Jennings floating around near the tail end of his career, but you've had a, you had a few around your time. So, like a, no, like no, a lot I, had, I had the honour of before Pat retired to play against him a few times, so that was uh, that was a bonus for me. Oh, dream come true for you! I bet. Oh, yeah. you know, yeah. anyone like you said, you got your signed sort of yeah. signed shirt as well. So I mean, meeting. I mean, even meeting one of your legends. I mean, if we're like we we were meeting like t- today with you, you know, we're meeting one of our legends. I bet that was a eye opener for you personally as one of your one of your heroes. Well, it was strange because he was playing for uh, he was playing for Arsenal, and and we we played them on a Tuesday night at St Andrews, and uh, we beat. They were a good team at the well. They've always been a good team, but uh, yeah. we we turned the form books upside down and we beat them two one at St Andrews. And all I kept thinking of during the game, it's strange what goes through your mind. Was as soon as this final whistle is going, I'm racing up the other end and I'm walking the length of the pitch with him. I'm yeah. going to meet. I'm going to meet him by his box, and I'm going to walk the length of the pitch with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I wanted to spend as much time with him as I could, just walking off. You know. You know. Um, so that was um, that, that was a big highlight for me to, to do that. Um, yeah. So um, when I played, there was lots, lots of lots of top talented goalkeepers. 
Yeah, it was similar to us, wasn't it, Dino? When Jono came into the the supporters bunker, Watford with the supporters bunker and uh, TC and uh, had a drink with us. It was it's a bit surreal. One of the players that back in the mid nineties we'd sort of idolised and uh, him standing with us, going, "Oh, you know, this happened, this happened," giving us stories like yourself doing it today, and it was. It's an eye opener, especially when you meet your heroes. You don't, they never say never meet your heroes, but You're it's, disappointed, yeah. You do, <laughs> you do. They always say that, but um, I'm fortunate that pretty much 99% of my heroes have been absolutely terrific. So, including yourself, so it's it's always reassuring. <laughs> TC um, Watford, when he said, TC, did you like did you like the family club atmosphere at Watford, and then the open days they did back then as well? Uh, um, yeah, I mean, one of the things going back to the open days is one of the things that we had in our contracts. I think we were the first first to to have that, and Graham insisted on that was um, that we had to do so many hours in the community, mm. um, uh, and we had a, a rotor where you'd have to go and it was either push a pile of pennies over there or present this there or go <laughs> down. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. Um, each player was designated certain throughout the season, um, and then couple of times there'd be four or five of you go uh, en masse to, to something you know um, I even remember going to um, and I'm gonna the surname it'll come to me in a minute his <laughs> name's Gavin who was in the family enclosure um, and oh what's the surname now it'll come to me and I went to his bar mitzvah um, you know in in North London um, and I went down there, and um, his mom's name's Joe. He's Gavin. Oh, we can't. And I used to see him in the family enclosure. And the, the biggest thing for a, for a player is is going to a club, and uh, the fans taking to you straight away. And yeah. I can honestly say there'd have been certain individuals when I made a mistake having a pop. Or, oh, always is even people uh, now, yeah, you know. Some, some, you know, which is which is part for the course. But um, I'll probably say that um, I never ever went out onto the pitch for Watford um, feeling better anywhere else than playing for Watford because of the confidence those fans give me. They supported me. I used to get a lot of mail, uh, you know, from, from fans if I'd made a mistake. Um, you know, I used to get a lot of uh, mail telling me how uh, it was a one-off and you've saved us in this game, that game, this game or whatever. It, 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 it does give you a boost and it makes you feel good. Yeah. Uh, so, and knowing I could go out and probably could afford to make a mistake without getting uh, pillared um, was, it, you know, it made you even more confident. So, yeah. it was... So, um, from that point of view, it was it was very good at what uh, at Watford, and I, and I do believe in the in the community stuff. I mean, now it'd be very rare at, at most clubs that you get near to a player. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. You don't. I mean, Luther touched upon that as well, and uh, that that gap that it seemed to get wider and wider is happening now. I mean, we remember going to even something like a non-league club with Hemel Town. They used to let you on the. Uh, Lucy on the bus with the players uh, on the way to the games, and you had that connection with the with the with the players. I know, obviously, you like their own privacy and all that stuff, which I completely agree. But you had that. What I mean is, you had that unity, that connection with the fans a bit more due to the community work, and like you said, going to people's um, you know personal you know events and stuff like that. You, you felt a bit more like you were together. So when you went on the pitch, you know, you had that more of a connection. You know, you knew they were behind you. You already talked to the talked to the fans. And, you know, it, like I say, that you're, all, you're all together. But now, like you said, there's not that still... I mean, you had your Troy Deanies and players like that still, you know, engage with the fans, say hello, take photos after the game. But it's not, it's not the same that it was, say, the 90s or the 80s, was it? No, oh, I mean even even when I um, you know we used to park uh, park the car down behind the um, the allotment end, you know the rookery end. Yeah, yeah. And we had the car. I don't know whether the car parks there anymore or whether there's an allotment still there, but oh, yeah. uh, there was an allotment down there and then a little car park, and we used to park there and then walk up. The, I used to walk up the hill with with, with my dad, and uh, you know, and he'd go off into the players' lounge and. Uh, or the guest room it was called then, um, 
and then I, I'd go in and then see him see him after the game, and then you know you walk you walk down there after the game and there'd be certain fans waiting for you to speak to you after the game and they'd often walk down talking to me. Yeah. When I got to my car, I'd get in the car and then they'd go back and walk back up the hill, you know, because they'd they'd had their twenty minutes chat and this, that and the other. And you know, I, I was happy to do that, you know, and, and to the point where Watford all Watford has always been uh, a family club and a community club that Richard Walker um yeah, Richard Walker, yeah. He often, he often calls me and said, look, TC, and then as soon as lockdown come, he was on the phone. I know he, he rang Tommy Mooney as well. And he gave me a list of names, a list of, um, a list of telephone numbers. And he said, could you give him a call? Wish him all the best. Is there anything mm. the, club, the club could, you know, hello, it's Tony Coatney. And the first thing I said, no. uh, well, are these people of a certain vintage? I said, because they won't know, most of them won't remember. Know who, Tony, <laughs> know who Tony Coton is. I said, so can you make them 55 plus? Um, <laughs> so so I, I got the senior, I got the seniors and, and uh, you know, I was glad to do it because, uh, you know, it was, it, you know, it's been terrible times and some people are lonely and all they live for is going to the, going to the game on a Saturday. Yeah. You know? so, so if I could do a bit, I was glad to do it. And I know Tommy was the same. Yeah, and I'd like to say, I mentioned Luther once again, he, he touched upon exactly what you just said as well. And he, he said as well, it, as much as it, as kind as you were ringing them up and it gave them a boost, it also, it gave you, it gave you something to do and obviously engaging with fans and sharing stories as well, like you said, of a, of a fan of a certain vintage. But to be honest, there's people younger than me that know about your exports because the generations are passed on the stories. So we're yeah. sort of educating our children. I mean, my kids have been, most of my kids have been force fed Watford, so they've had no choice anyway. But I'll be passing on these stories and say, look, this player, oh, you should have you should have watched this player when he was playing. He was amazing. And that's how the younger generation get to know the yeah. players like yourself, like even the Cliff Holtons all the way back there because it's passed down down the generations as well so yeah yeah i can see yeah. what you mean though it's about it's about educating them mate that's it that's, that's cool. it great parenting <laughs> great parenting yeah. that's what you're doing yeah yeah i've set the foundations for the youngest one she's named taylor so it's just a matter of time before uh, i pass on the uh, pass on the um the knowledge or lack of that i've got anyway so i leave me i leave it to me dad if i if i don't do it so well believe it or not there is a man city fan out there with a christian name called Coton. Believe it or not, definitely. Yeah, oh, there is. There is. Yeah, yeah. I know strange things, but they, they worship. They worship players, and you know, same with our like, so same with us. We've got. I, I, there must be. There must be a few Nigels out there. <laughs> Kelly will love that. But there must be a few Nigels out there. Yeah, there might. Be, there might be a few little Kellys out there. I don't know. That's it. Definitely. There's a coat in somewhere. Shout, someone shouting, "Oi, coat and off to bed now!" I reckon during this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely yeah. right, Mister Eighteen Eighty One's on. Roy Moore, Andy Barton's on. Uh, Super Joshy Fillers on. Kathy, uh, ex work mate of mine. Evening, Kathy. Lovely to hear from you. Right, I was going to ask this as well because there's a few managers, including Ron Saunders, uh, which I didn't know that was actually manager of Birmingham at the time, which is one hell of a manager because um, like I've heard, like I say, passed on. I've heard stories about him. I've watched Match of the Eighties and different things as well. But um, Alan Lafwell said, "TC says, how does?" Working with GT compared to working with Sir Alex. Um, I've been I've been very fortunate to work with um, what I class as three top class managers in uh, in Sir Alex Graham and Ron Saunders. Yeah, it was Ron Saunders that he didn't give me my debut. Jim Smith did, but it was Ron Saunders that really gave me the the, the confidence and um, you know belief in my own ability to. And then, and then obviously he gave me the more run in the first in the first team. Yeah. Um, but the the different, I, I think Graham, a um, bit like Sir Alex, uh, they both ran the club from top to bottom. They made all the decisions. Everything that was that was done, certainly from the playing point of view, was it had to be run past those two. Um, and um, I would probably say, if Graham had about had the uh, analytics of today, you know, analysts on hand um, to to get him all the information and all the data and, and everything. 
uh, he would have been even better because he was he was so far out of his time. I mean, yeah. when, when we'd be looking at the opposition, we we, we were in the guest room at, at, at Vicarage Road, which had got just a a small TV and a and a video, and it was like put the video in, yeah. look at look at the opposition, and it was stop, rewind, play, stop, rewind, and it took all afternoon. Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, we'd be in there at one o'clock and come out at five o'clock, and uh, it was hard. It was hard to take, to be honest, um, you know. But we we had to do it. But yeah. he was he was highlighting certain tactical points uh, that we needed to, you know, if if there's a weakness there or their strength there, he showed it, and it was rewind. Whereas now it's just a it's just a touch screen thing, and it's bump and it's up and it's bump and it and, it, yeah. and it's. I mean, the whole it, team of analysers now, haven't yeah, they? They're basically gather yeah. all the data for them now. And, so. and, it, and everything can be condensed down into 15, 12, 15 minutes, uh, which is um, is probably the time which I think any more than that, I think it's proven that you lose people lose concentration. So, um, yeah. um, so um, that's why every team meeting now is normally between 12 and 15 minutes long. Because uh, players start to switch off, but so Graham was was ahead of that. Uh, his man management was great. So was Sir Alex's. Yeah. So was Ron Saunders. Uh, you know they they were all they were all disciplinarians. Every one of them, which is strange for me. That oh, we've always gone against <laughs> discipline, really. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but along with uh, those three, I, I towed the line, and um, you know they were. Um, they were superb in their own rights, each and every one of them. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Dino, mate. Sorry, mate. I've got I've got a couple of things no, to ask me. You, you you shoot, mate. You go on. You got anything else, mate? Um, who are your football heroes, Tony? Growing up or now, who are your favourite players well, you love? Well, obviously Pat that I told you about um, was um, was my not my reason for playing in goals, but no. um, he he was the one that uh, whenever Tottenham came to the Midlands. Uh, I begged my dad to take me to wherever they were playing uh, and always asked him, could he get me a ticket behind the goals <laughs> uh, just to get as close as to him as I could. So um, certainly uh, Pat Jennings was 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 that. Um, uh, in, in terms of, uh, I don't think I'm lucky enough to say that probably the, my biggest hero was my father. Uh, you know, I, I always looked up to him, uh, yeah. main, mainly because he was a roofer. And I used to say, Dad, do you want a cup of tea? <laughs> <laughs> you, you always looked up to him then. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, no, he wasn't actually. He was a lorry driver. But, um, oh, okay. I just thought I'd slip that one in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, so so from a support, supportive parent point of view, without being pushy, because you get a lot of, I've seen a lot of pushy parents in this game. Yeah, of course. Uh, with young players, um, but he was very supportive, um, and um, so him first, Pat Jennings second, and then you know I can't, I can't, I know I'm, I'm probably going to be swearing here now, lads. Um, but, um, <laughs> Go on, uh, we'll let you off. Uh, Mick, Mick Arthur's, uh, you know, we've been best friends for a long time now. Oh, Mickey Arthur, I had the pleasure of meeting him last year. Such a lovely bloke. He says. Uh, I, he, shut, he looked at my arm because I'm, I'm a healthcare assistant at St Albans and uh, I had my uniform, obviously nothing below the elbow. He could see me WFC and he just looked and went, oh, God. I said, don't <laughs> worry, Mickey. I said, I said I'm going to ask you one question. Uh, this was outside, obviously not in the hospital. This is outside on, he was um, he was around St Albans at the time. And I said, I, oh, honestly, the only question I asked him, what was it like were, um, playing alongside Vinnie Jones? <laughs> Did you? Yeah, I did anything about Luton. I said, look, don't worry. I said, don't worry, Mick. I said, you can wash that blood off. But um, yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, you know, you, you know the story because he's the only player that never had to do, uh, never got an initiation at Wimbledon. So oh, that's, really? Uh, yeah, he's the only player that the new player. They all went, well, no, nah, we're not doing it with him. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think so. He looked a bit intimidating. A lovely fella, but when he, when he was walking up, he's like, oh, okay. So yeah, so we we go away uh, every year, but, but we haven't done this year because the lockdown. We're planning, yeah. we're planning, we're planning my uh, my big birthday next year where we're going on a road trip. Brilliant. Um, yeah, so uh, I speak to him 
uh, every day. But funny enough, lads, I haven't spoke to him today. How did they get, <laughs> how did they get on yesterday? <laughs> oh, man, it's a thing of beauty. They, won, they lost 5 0. So that's um, obviously, yeah. I, I was deeply depressed um, this morning after hearing that result. So, so uh, but there's, 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 um, there's still time. Uh, so uh, I'll just see if that was in messaging then. Uh, <laughs> there's still time for him to call me, but uh, yeah. So, so that, those in answer to your question, obviously yeah. from from a career point of view, uh, a playing point of view, then Pat Jennings, um, and then you, my biggest hero really was my dad because of the support yeah. and everything that he did, and and uh, my friendship with Mick. Yeah, uh, he was a very hard player, Mick. He was a good player, but very tough, very non. Um, shall we say non-compromising as well? Well, so you would I, say I old have, school, but it's very, I have very got, hard, buddy. You can't see it on screen there, but <laughs> I have got a scar there where he was playing for Luton, I was playing for Watford, and he, he rang me up on the morning. and He went, "You know, I'm going to have to do you today, don't you?" <laughs> and, I, and I said, Mick, "Mick, I wouldn't expect anything else." And uh, yeah, he gave me four stitches. Jesus, that's that's real friendship, though, isn't it? <laughs> well, he, he, at least he told me he was going to do it. Yeah, exactly. Give you a clear <laughs> warning. Yeah. That's what I never, uh, to, even in Sunday League, I never said to anyone, I'll, I'll go past you. One, I had no pace, and two, I wouldn't even dare doing it anyway because I'll probably get taken out. So he stuck me in centre back. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, hope, I hope that answered your question. Brilliant. Uh, yep. Right. Okay. You touched on as well that um, you're still at, still at Sunderland. Uh, but what did you make? I mean, you probably you probably say, yeah, I've been asked this a million times. But what did you think of that Sun Until I Die documentary? Because personally, I absolutely loved it. I had the pleasure of messaging uh, the chair, the current chairman as well and saying that, you know, there's a lot of things he got criticised for, but there's a lot of things, you know, OK, like the overpricing of uh, Will Grigg as well. But his heart's in the right place. Obviously, being an Oxford fan as well, taking over as Sunderland, you were, did you say head of recruitment? I know Ricky Hill's there as well. Um, obviously, I don't really want to say what kind of um, team he played for, but I obviously recognise Ricky Hill as well. But I no, mean, it Richard, must have... Richard Hill. That's it, that's for, it. Who played for Watford. That's it. Oh, that's the Richard Hill. Right, okay, because you know, yeah, I was getting mixed up with the, um, the one that was in the dark side, but yeah. So, um, yeah. but you were head of recruitment. What did you make of that whole period? Where, uh, last, not last season, season before. What? Did, how did you make of that? Was it really how it was reflected in the documentary? Oh, that's probably well, a stupid question to ask. There's that. Been, well, there's been two documentaries. Uh, one was finished just prior to us going in two years ago, and I think mm. the end of that program shows you Stuart arriving. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As the as, as the new chairman, um, and then uh, the whole. Uh, next Flix series was being filmed last season um, and um, me and Richard Hill was we didn't want to take part in it no. to be honest because, because as the first series seemed to be more about the chief the outgoing chief executive Mike Bain I don't know whether you saw the first one yeah yeah I think um, he has arts in the right place as well Mike Bain but I just think um he got a lot of flack for he was basically the figurehead of monk you know and everyone else was pulling the strings above him yeah so so he got that but obviously there is I would have thought as a company and somebody that's doing this you have editorial rights Yep. And you can put in and take out what you what you don't like. Oh, well, I would have I would insist on that if that if they were doing about that. Fair enough. Um, so they can make you look as good or unpopular as the you know if, if you don't have those editorial rights. And um, it soon became apparent uh, with the the second series was Charlie Meffin, uh, the guy with the tan and the wavy yeah. hair. And yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got an opinion about him, but I'll let you talk and first. The, and the posh voice. Uh, it seemed it seemed it soon come apparent that it, it was going to be his show and nobody else's show and this, that, and the other. And the fact that he was walking around the place mic'd up all the time. Yeah. It, I didn't adhere to that and neither did Richard Hill. No. So so we wouldn't let him in our office at all. And he was 
an associate director. It says a lot that uh, I've seen a lot where he says uh, co-owner. He's not a co-owner. He has six. Yeah, that's that's the way it came across in the documentary that he was like both of them were the owners, but then it came then it transpired that he wasn't, and it was like, hang on a moment, it's a bit conflicting. Yeah, no, he's got six percent, um, and um, you know, so it, it soon and then. There was all kinds of stories around the place of how he was treating people, how he was talking to people. This, that, yeah. yeah, especially on Boxing Day with that with that lady, the um, the Irish lady thing. I, I can understand where, like you said, when they did the meeting and no one took any notes and there was some sort of thing. I can understand where they were being a bit forward with that, but there was stuff like changing the changing the the um, walkout tune. Um, when he was talking to her on Boxing Day, it wasn't her fault, blessing. It was just the way he came across that. Um, you know, if you really want to put a case for him, he didn't come across very well. No, uh, not at all. Um, and I, I'd worked at Man United for all those years. And, yeah. um, you know, when you work for Man United and you're on the recruitment side and the coaching side, there was never, under Sir Alex, there was never a player uh, sign which was uh, for weeks leading up to it and you knew about him. It was always done after he'd signed and, you know, you'd sign this play. It was like you signed the Official Secrets Act, uh, whereas with Charlie Meffin, he couldn't wait to tell everybody before he told, you know, the key members of, his, uh, of the staff. So, um, you know, it made it very difficult when they were going in the Sunderland Echo and on the podcast and saying, we're going to sign a forward. We definitely we need a forward. We're definitely going to sign one. Yeah. So when, and when you when you contact clubs about a player, you know we call it the Sunderland tax. You know yeah. it had gone it, it was double or it was treble the amount that the player was actually worth. Um, purely and simple because clubs knew that we were desperate, and he he gone all over the press saying um, we needed to sign one. We needed to sign one. You know, so yeah. so it was difficult. So in terms of the program, one I think I've, I've got a little 15 second cameo appearance which Stuart asked me to do and it's because Stuart asked me I did it um other than that there was a lot that they wanted to do that me and Richard Hill just turned up turned no. and we said no we're not we don't want to be involved in it yeah I was watching it I was like oh TC hey yeah. <laughs> there he is because yeah. <laughs> no, he said there he, goes. there he goes there he is there he goes yeah um, <laughs> enough enough for people to haunt you for an autograph you know <laughs> just enough um but <laughs> Um, when he said TC, I said, no, it's not Tony Cohen, surely. And they'll just it flashbacks because obviously you had your stint there as well. Um, and I was going to touch upon that as well because you you were signed under Peter Reid and the Premier League season, yeah. obviously experienced keeper. They had a couple of keepers that weren't really, because I mean, they had Shea given on loan the season before. They went up, they signed you experience alongside Noel Quinn as well. Um, which obviously went on and had a fantastic career for them as well. Uh, but you, unfortunately, you had a really bad break, shall we say, pun, no, no pun intended, um, that really derailed your season because you were really kicking on then. Because I remember you coming to us uh, in the League Cup as well. Yeah, um, which was, which was thankfully, the time it was because it, it meant I came back to Vicarage Road for the first time since I'd left. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I hadn't um, I hadn't been back for six years. Um, you know, so um, as soon as that draw took place, I was absolutely delighted that I was I was coming back. Or, albeit, I know it wouldn't be a full house and this that and the other because it was the League Cup and this that and the other. But um, you know, I, I, I've gone on record and said when I ran out and I ran up to the. Um, um, uh, the Red Lion end. What do you call that end now? Yeah, the Rickard Road is still Vicarage Road and it's like technically it's yeah, a family the stroke thing. But yeah, I've got a little um, yeah. passage about that as well, but you carry on first. So when I, when I ran up there and, uh, you know, it, uh, listen, even when fans are doing that two years, you're running yeah. up. And <laughs> one, so, <laughs> fan ran on and hugged me and all this and welcome back and all this. Like, you know, I'm thinking, blimey. They've not forgot me, uh, so I was de- I was delighted that um, we we drew you in the cup early doors, and then unfortunately, if probably uh, so I'm trying to think which way around it was. Did we play at Broke 
the part think, first or was it Victor? Uh, no, I think it was us first. And um, there's a couple of things I want to say. Firstly, I didn't hug you too hard. Um, <laughs> what, was that you? <laughs> Um, and also, as well, I've still, student... still got the lipstick on me. Too. Oh, well, well it's, it's a nice shade of red back in those days. I know there's a couple of people trying to run on. Um, and also, um, I was stewarding in 98 99, and you walk past an our mate, and Dino knows him as our mate James Bound, and we call him Jim, who's actually on this form as well. It, he was the vomitory up in the rookery, and the other, the other end, the south stand, um, is now the rookery. Uh, well, it's always been the rookery. And um, I was at the bottom, a uh, student, you actually came walking past me and he looked, he just glared at me. So was, as you walk past, I went, Tony, you're right. And you just are very kind. He said, oh, how are you doing, mate? And just walked past me. And um, my mate was glaring because he's like, he, you're like a god to him. He, you're a, he's his <laughs> oh, favourite no. player. And he's just, because he, he turned away. He says, I don't want to do the bottom of the stand today. Can I do your vomitry? And I said, oh, okay, fine. I'll stand at the bottom. I can't really watch much of the game being a steward anyway. And then you came walking past. He said, that's the one thing he always regrets that. We'll get to meet him one day, don't worry. Yeah, it, his, his time will come. His time will come. Um, yeah. But yeah, so what was the what was the uh, you said about Mick Harford? But what would you say he was the toughest player you ever played against? Uh, physically, yeah, um, one of them. Um, I would probably say that my bogeyman really was uh, probably Ian Rush. Really, he, you know, he, he was there. He was a well, a bad player, was he? He was a good player. <laughs> he, he, he was a predator. Yeah. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of toughness, really, I suppose. Uh, you know, Mick. The, the thing with Mick um, was. Uh, he'd take it as well. It ain't as if you can't touch me or you can't give it me back. You know what I mean? He expected it. You give it out, you you, you know, you, you have to expect some back. So, you know, he, he was like that. Um, so from from that point of view, then then probably, yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think of, of, of others. Um, mm. I mean, would they be bogey players, if you know what I mean? They're like, say, teams always have another team where they always seem to lose against. Was there any player you went, oh, God, I'm probably going to concede against him. He always seems to get one past me. Have I gone very dark, by the way, on this screen? Or yeah, I think you've dimmed the light. you set the mood. I think you, we no, just I'll, think you've set the mood. I'll put the lamp on, sure. That's a, there we go. Ghost hunting like me again. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, not, he's almost ghost hunting um, sort of darkness <laughs> like Dino was last night, but not quite. It was more sort of set the mood, TC. Right, okay, mate. Um, um, what, what was your question? No, just because um, we said about... Um, oh, bogey, bogey players. Bogey players, the one you sort of think, oh, God, I'm, go I'm probably going to end up conceding yeah. against this guy. He always seems to score against me no matter how well probably, I play. Pro probably Rushy. Yeah? Yeah. Probably, probably, uh, probably in Russia. Uh, like you, you say, not a bad yeah, player. Yeah, no, he's, he wasn't bad, was he? Uh, Dino, do you know anything, mate? Um, we've got about um, five minutes, mate. But Yeah, I'll quickly chuck it in. Um, what do you make of this um, VAR technology, <laughs> Tony? What do you make of it? Go on, give me an honest opinion. <laughs> Load of bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> um, until, they, until, they get the consistent, until they get it consistently right and, and uh, you know... Being offside with it out wide by your toenail and ah, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. The game's the game's gone. Uh, I, I mean, it really has. 